Hello everyone. This video is discussing about identifying triggers. Identifying triggers can be a helpful strategy to remove the triggers that can lead to increased or escalated behaviors. Even though it can be tricky at times, or easily overlooked, or perhaps even missed, triggering occurs when any certain change occurs in something that can cause a negative emotional response. For example, someone decides to turn the channel while you're watching a good movie. That changing of the channel may be a trigger to be, hey, what are you doing? Why did you stop my movie? We experience triggers every single day in our day-to-day -day life. There are different types of triggers that we often don't think about or are easily overlooked that can lead to increased behaviors or even increased arguments and or stress. Communication breakdowns or barriers. Basic needs, perhaps someone hasn't eaten or hasn't slept well, even feeling cold or hot, family issues, or events such as difficult news or financial stress, like loss of employment. Those are all big triggers. People often don't think about or realize that those are triggering situations. That's because we often focus on worry, finding resources, and the like, which can lead us to forget about ourselves and taking care of ourselves because we're so busy worrying about how to mitigate those stressors or frustrations. Emotional triggers can be any topic that makes us feel uncomfortable. These emotional triggers tell us which aspects of our life that we may feel frustrated about or dissatisfied with. And that can vary in every person because of how we struggle with something differently. For example, Perhaps you recently lost a family member to cancer. Everyone in the family will have an emotional trigger. Perhaps when the word cancer surfaces or other people may discuss similar incidents. However, everyone in the family will respond differently. One may shut down. Another may withdraw or walk away whereas others may want to discuss it. In the situation of dealing with coronavirus and the unknown, there are a few emotional triggers as well as others that we may have that can lead to increased frustrations or stressors. Of course, the higher the level, the more likely that the negative behavior will increase. I'm sure you, as parents, have had experience in dealing with triggers with your own children, both big and small. For example, a three or four year old, perhaps they haven't had a nap. What do you think will happen? No nap? That right there is a trigger, which can equate to increase in behaviors. Whereas a seven or eight year old, maybe they're feeling very energetic, but they can't go outside. What's going to happen with them? That right there, that trigger leads to an increase in behavior. Same thing with teenagers who maybe have an iPad and the battery just died and they can't find their charger. 
that could lead to a negative behavior. Most of us as parents typically know what will happen. And we often don't think about those being triggers, but they are. Most of us try to avoid those triggers by ensuring their child has their basic needs met or providing supports or suggestions to help alleviate that. However, sometimes we as parents are having our own feeling of being overwhelmed or distracted by other things and we fail to recognize the triggers they're undergoing, and therefore we end up dealing with increased behaviors. Coronavirus and the stay-at-home orders also created a new trigger at home. Additional fatigue, feeling overwhelmed with instruction, and additional roles and responsibilities, trying to find creative ways to keep the family busy, And at the same time, the addition of having to work from home or even going to the workplace as an essential employee or even the loss of a job and having to file for unemployment. Children can sense those vibes within the household from their parents, which can lead to emotional triggers or others. For example, communication breakdowns communication barriers, basic needs not being met, inability to go outside to release some of that pent-up energy or emotions for that matter. Many things surface as a result of the coronavirus stay-at-home orders. Parents, in order to decide what the triggers are triggering their child and leading them to respond in a negative way, it's important to self-reflect first. Do some of that self-assessment in a way that you need to check on your own feelings and see if there's any emotional triggers you yourself are facing, or perhaps not. If so then you'll need to first start with managing yourself to a point in which you can choose your response or behavior. You will also need to assess if you need some help or not. Sometimes it means taking a deep breath and asking someone else to take over and assisting the child manage themselves. It is okay to ask for help. If no help is available, then it is okay to tell your child, I need a break. To be able to compose yourself and let them know you'll come back to talk about it at a later time. If you're able to manage yourself, then you can begin to reflect upon your child's feelings, what the triggers they may be facing, and provide support and assist your child in regaining control of their behaviors, and then go from there. I want to end with an awesome quote that gives a powerful and helpful message to parents. This quote is from a book called Between Parent and Child, written by Dr. Heim G. Jeanette, and the quote says, I have come to the fearful conclusion that I am the decisive element in the environment. It is my personal approach that creates the climate. It is my daily mood that makes the weather. I possess great power. For my child or your child's name, 
to be disgruntled or joyful. I can be a tool of torture or a source of inspiration. I can humiliate or humor. I can hurt or heal. In all situations, it is my response that determines whether crisis will escalate or de-escalate. and to humanize or dehumanize someone. Thank you.